Let's head straight to Washington and speak to our correspondent there, Ketavan Gorgistani. Ketavan, Russia has, of course, been a thorny issue for years between America's two parties, regardless of who's been at the White House. Just how are Joe Biden's own party and his Republican rivals responding to these uh, talks in Geneva? Well, unsurprisingly, uh, the Republicans are being uh, critical of uh, Joe Biden and his stance uh, versus uh, Vladimir Putin. And uh, the main message from uh, the Republican is basically that Joe Biden, uh, and therefore the United States, uh, was weak in the face of the president uh, of Russia. The Republicans are attacking uh, Joe Biden uh, for not being tough enough on uh, the Russian president for not uh, putting more clear red lines, at least uh, publicly, uh, some even uh, going as far as uh, saying that uh, the fact that there was no joint press conference was a sign of weakness uh, from uh, the American president. That was, for example, what uh, the uh, former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, uh, said, saying that it basically gave uh, Putin the opportunity to spew Russian propaganda unchallenged. Uh, that that, in fact, is something uh, that uh leads back to the 2018 uh, joint press conference between Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin. That was exactly what Joe Biden and his team wanted to avoid. And that's what the Democrats uh, were hailing. They uh, were uh, welcoming this uh, turn of page uh, from that Helsinki uh, press conference. Uh, the Democrats saying that uh, they were happy to see uh, Joe Biden being firm, but also bringing back diplomacy and engaging with Vladimir Vladimir Putin from a position of strength, telling him where the lines were, but also willing to negotiate to work with the Russian president on uh, subjects where the two countries have similar interests. Now, Ketavan, Joe Biden's uh, eight-day tour of Europe has now come to an end. Is the view at the White House that this first overseas uh, trip has been a success? Well, look, obviously, uh, the White House uh, will be uh, pushing uh, this uh, trip as a big success for uh, Joe Biden, his first, of course, overseas uh, trips. And uh, that is because uh, the message at the beginning for the goal of uh, the trip was this one. Joe Biden was going to the G7, to Brussels, and then to Geneva to meet with Vladimir Putin with two main goals in mind. One, to show that America was back on the world stage, that it was back involved in world diplomacy, that the U.S. was standing strong with its allies, rebuilding those ties with its main allies, and that it would stand firm against some of the countries that challenge U.S. interests partly Russia, but also China. And if you take these uh, main goals, uh, he seems to have, at least publicly, at least from what we've seen coming out of these different meetings, uh, he has succeeded because uh, the allies, uh, both in Cornwall and in Brussels, said that they were happy to see the U.S. back on the world stage. They were happy, uh, as Emmanuel Macron said, that uh, the U.S. was back in the club. Uh, they welcomed uh, Joe Biden's uh, input, the fact that uh, he uh, discussed with them before meeting uh, with Vladimir uh, Putin. Uh, and he uh, also managed to insist uh, to focus on China's challenges, for example, as we saw in some of the communiques that came out of these different meetings. And finally, he uh, stood up to Vladimir Putin, at least in the eyes of uh, the White House. So this is how uh, they're likely uh, to be framing this as they return uh, to Washington and take on some of the more domestic uh, challenges that are coming ahead for the U.S. president. Ketavan Gorgistani, thank you very much.